Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Historical Humans Reacts and on today's episode we are going to be talking one of the most controversial modern ideas in the field of North American archaeology where Cl the Clovis Paleo Indians were not the first settlers in North America, no, no, no. New evidence suggests that more than 23,000 years ago, the earliest Americans may have traveled across ice highways across the oceans to reach North America. Yeah. Now, being Americans, of course, they did so in a Walmart go-kart while following <laughs> a bald eagle. And that's the God-given truth. <laughs> they were... Th uh. <laughs> That's where Dale Earnhardt Sr. came from. <laughs> he was drifting uh, across uh, the ice. Uh, bad, jo bad jokes aside, yes. Uh, yeah, the first uh, Native Americans may have been here 23,000 years ago is the uh, purpose of this article. And it is, um, it is an interesting theory uh, based on the uh, New Mexican footprints. So the New Mexican footprints are a set of fossilized human footprints that were found in New Mexico that were confirmed to date to about 23,000 years ago. And this is controversial because in the modern accepted theory, and this is becoming less and less so, but it is known that the earliest known set of indigenous in North America were the Clovis type, and that is known based on a projectile point that they made which was a long fluted um, spear tip that was massive, but you could tell because it was hafted half or fluted halfway through. And the Clovis points are some of the rarest artifacts in North America. And those generally date to about 13,500 years ago. And that also coincides when the ice sheets in Canada started opening up that people were able to migrate down. So that was the, accepted norm that was the accepted history for a while but then there became or there started to show a lot of sites that had anomalies and by anomalies they were outliers they were earlier dates they were earlier than what we had previously established <laughs> and for a lot of the old guard that was an issue because these modern ideas ruining my career's work but there's a lot of new ideas that are coming from this, and one of which that had sprouted is this idea of coastal migration. And at first, the idea that's been floated, and still is argued in a lot of ways, is that people would take small boats and island hop their way down the coast until they entered North America, effectively bypassing the Laurentide ice sheet that was over Canada. Yeah. This is suggesting that maybe... They didn't sail around it, that they might have just walked on over it. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, it, it's a sheet of ice, and while inhospitable, it is not impossible to walk across, especially if the average global temperature is significantly lowered. Not to mention, this is Canada, so they probably have developed ice skates at this point. Or at the very least, skis like the Norwegians. <laughs> Snowshoes, something. Oh no, Leif Air, like the earliest version of Leif Erikson is skiing right alongside a... a, a Holy <laughs> Mammoth. Yeah, who's next <laughs> to a, a native just ice skating. Yeah, 23,000 years ago. Yeah, that's about mammoth time. Yeah. Ish. Uh, yeah, and one of the key things to note this is that, well, this new theory, uh, you know, proposes an earlier date and an earlier wave of, uh, you know, uh, what what were we calling it? Not it's not immigration. It's uh, oh migration of my there's of migration. Then the Clovis points indicate uh, it does not invalidate the existence of the Clovis migration ten thousand years later. It simply indicates that the Clovis migration may not have been the first. That's you know this theory doesn't say the Clovis people you know didn't happen. It just says they weren't the first to get here. And it's and that's that race actually been confirmed by dna analysis there have been three known major migrations from asia into north america and those are very distinct and you can tell those based on dna analysis which is kind of neat um but there's a lot of issues with that as well as to 
um, you know, just ethnicity. But one of the things that is interesting about this that they also talk about is climatology because climate plays a role in this. And this is actually some uh, Justin lore here. This is what I initially wanted to study and pursue as my doctorate before I got invo involved with uh, tribal affairs. Um, but uh, paleoclimatology is something where people study the pollen that is present in these ancient soils. And they look at the plant life, the the f uh, flora that would be present at these times, and they look and would try and recreate the environment that was around during this time. And the Bering Strait or Beringia, as it's referred to, the land bridge between Asia and North America, they have gone down to the bottom of the ocean and taken uh, core samples and done pollen samples. And they have shown that there are plant lives that were present that could have sustained both um, large-scale um, fauna, the woolly mammoth, the uh, woolly rhinoceros, the um, saber-toothed tigers, all of these animals would have been present and were able to be hunted and forage for food. But even further than that, this is the part that I really like, is when you look at the map of the North Pacific from uh, pretty much the Kamchatka Peninsula all the way down to the Bay of uh, San Diego is a massive kelp highway where kelp lines the outer barrier of the ocean and kelp can one, be eaten itself, two, har harbors a ton of wildlife and fish that can be harvested and eaten for sustenance. So there's a lot of ways that we can prove that there were ways that people could sustain themselves had they only had the technology like the boats to do so. Yeah, nets, technology, uh, pretty straightforward stuff uh, once you figure out how to do it, which arguably uh, 23,000 years ago, yeah, humanity had, had an idea of how to do that, just in general. The only argument that holds validity against this is the lack of evidence for having boats or any sort of um, buoyant transportation method however even our best knowledge of ship making around this time involved perishable materials so some items that are not likely to survive that depth of time quite frankly yeah but it's a really really interesting theory and it's something that i find particularly really really fascinating because there are evidence for human habitation. Now, 23,000 years ago is a massive jump. I know Monte Verde in South America was pretty well known as one of the earliest at about 14,500. Yeah. But, you know, this is something cool and not something that the outside really hears about that often. Um, but, yeah, I think... This is actually a great point for us to wrap up. I mean, I've gone ranting for long enough. This is definitely a, a Justin choice. <laughs> but if you guys enjoyed, let us know down below. If there's a topic you'd like to hear, let us know. And we will see you in the next one.